Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for taking the time to drop in for a ham shack chat. This time, we'll be taking a look at sending and receiving CW Morse code using the FL Digi program. This will include setting up FL Digi, creating macros, and direct entry method without the use of macros. I'll also show you how to connect to the N3 FJP amateur contest log to preserve your QSOs for posterity. I've added chapters to the video description so you can quickly move within the video to view or review what you need to know. I'll also include links to download the software and purchase anything that I happen to mention during the videos. Please note that this video is radio agnostic. Now I did use my ICOM IC7300 but you should be able to adapt the instructions for your rig. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, corrections, or just want to tell me your favorite color, please make your remarks down in the comment section below. Comments. On FL Digi, we're going to start by selecting our operation mode by clicking op mode and clicking CW. This tells FL Digi what to expect. Then we're going to come down directly underneath the frequency and there's a little pull down menu. You want it to be in CW. That is going to set our rig to CW. Next we're going to come up here to configure, configure dialog, modem, click on CW. I recommend using the wind keyer. I'll put a link in the video description where you can pick one up. You set this up for where you want everything. My WinKeyer USB is set for port 13 for the IC7300. We can close all this. Next, we're going to come down to Rig Control. And I use the ham library. So that's right here. And just set this up for your rig. I'll close that down. Next, we want to go to our sound card and then select Devices. Select Port Audio here and set your audio codex to the one for your rig. We'll save that and close that. That completes everything you need to do on FL Digi for now. We will come back and re-explore some more options later on in the video. Before we move on to creating and using macros, and if you're enjoying this and or have learned something so far, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. It was fun. Now you notice we have space for 48 macros and I've got them all cleared out right now, except for these over here. But I wanted to show you how to set this up. You want to come to configure, configure dialog, then select UI and come down to macro buttons. Now when I first loaded this I only had two rows up here. When I selected down here four bar macro set below TX and this is your TX window over here I can move them to the bottom and deselecting that moves them up here. I don't know why I lost my two. I've done everything that I can think of to get my two lines back, but I can't figure it out. So if somebody knows how to do that, please leave a comment for me down in the video description and I'll go ahead and put out another video appending this one. But for now, let's go ahead and save and close this. I'm going to right click on this upper left hand corner macro and that brings up my macro editor and I'm going to enter my call CQ. So the first thing we want to do is turn on our transmit. So you scroll down over here under the, all the selections that are available. You find TX, then click on this green arrow and it will insert that. Now I'm going to give myself a line and type in CQ, 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 DE. And now I'm going to find the my call. So with my call selected, I'm going to click the green arrow, give it a space, green arrow, give it a space, green arrow, give it a space. I'm going to enter the letter K 
and drop down a line, go back down our selections here until I get to this section again, which is just above the transmit, I have my receive, and that will switch back to the receive side on my rig. Now we'll give it a label, and we'll call this call CQ. We're going to hit apply and close. Now I'm going to enter a few more macros. In order to save time, I'm going to pause the recording and go ahead and enter my macros. Then we'll come back and just review what I've entered. So, a short time later, Barbara Gordon receives several surprises. So I've populated all the macros, and I've got them up there, and I'm going to show them to you here. Starting with the My Call CQ, which I made a change to when I did this. Right click on that, and you can see I still go into TX. I've shortened my message to where I only have one CQ and my call one time. Then I go into receive. Then this one after three, and that forces a repeat. In other words, after you send this, wait three seconds and send it again. This number here, the number three, can be changed to any value in seconds that you want pause between sending your CQ message. We'll get out of this and let's go to the next one, Answer CQ. Now somebody's been calling CQ and I answered it. So it's going to transmit, end and receive. The message is their, that person's call, my call, my call. And I'm going to put my wife's call sign up here. Also, when you're doing this, you can just click on the call down here in the receive box and it will populate up there automatically. So we'll just apply that and I'm going to close that. We'll come back to it shortly. This is my RST plus a little bit. So again, begins with transmit, ends with receive. It's the person's call, my call. Thanks for the call. Your RST is RST, RST. RST is right up here. So say I received a 579 from her and I'm sending a 559. So we've now got that populated up there. I then go on to say that name here is Tom, QTH is Fayette County, Ohio, and I like to repeat those, and then get out with their call, my call, and KN. Close that, and take a look at my 73. Now we have completed everything that we were going to talk about, so here we go. You go begin and end with transmit and receive, the calls, thanks for the QSO, 73. The calls, SK, meaning the end of the conversation on my end. Now over here, sometimes you just want to toss your call out a couple times. So here it is, transmit and receive with my call twice in the middle. And I have this one, which I would encourage everybody to have something like this, rag chew. You'll notice that I start with transmit. I throw out their call and my call, then I go and start rag chewing. I'm still in transmit. And end rag, right click on that. You finish up with how copy, question mark, their call, your call, KN, and back to receive. Now that we've got our macros made, and please don't just take my words here. Go ahead and put your own personality into it. Add as many as you'd like. Organize it any way that you want to organize it. You got 48 to play with. So this was just a nice demo to show you what could be done. But we want to save it once we get everything in there. So I'm going to go to File, Macros, and Save. Now the one I have been using is this demo one. And I'm going to put down here CW Rag Chew as the title. And we're going to save that. And now, if I want to, I can go here, click on Open. And I've got CW Rag Chew right here. I click on that, and it will bring you right back to this. So you don't have to do that every darn time. So let's run through all of these. First off, 
if I were calling CQ, this is how it would come. I told you that I'm sending the short version and we're going to wait three seconds and you'll see that it repeats. And if you want to stop it, all you have to do is hit your escape key on your keyboard. Now we'll go ahead and clear all this. Yeah, you know, I'm scrolling the band as I come across a nice strong signal and the call sign that I'm working is AA6MZ. Now AA6MZ happens to be a former call sign of mine. I don't know if it's been reissued. If it has been, I hope you're treating it well. So I'm going to answer his CQ. Okay, so I've answered his CQ. He comes back to me. He's going to give me a uh, 569. I'm going to say, dude, you're, you're a little bit stronger than that with a 589. I'm going to send him my RST+. Plus. Note the 589 here. And rather than go through the rest of this to save time, we'll just hit escape and call that one done. And I'm going to put myself back in receive mode just to make sure that happened. And finally, we start getting into a rag chew. So I'm going to hit my rag start. Now you notice I got ahead of myself and typed O-N instead of O-H. I was able to correct it before I was sent. So that's actually what was sent. And I'm going to continue on. I'm just sending garbage stuff here. And when I get to that end point, I'm going to click on end. You see it populates it. There's how copy, their call, DE, my call, and KN. Finally, when it's all over, we send our 73s. For all of the demos I just did, my rig was set to 5 watts out and I was feeding this into this dummy load. I really think everyone should have something like this in their shack for testing and troubleshooting without having to go out over the air. So I put a link from my Amazon Associates account where you can buy this load and I'll get a small consideration from Amazon that does not affect your cost in the slightest. One more quick section before we put a bow on it. Please share sharing information with me. This video with your friends, compatriots, and cohorts in the ham radio community, especially on social media. So the title of this was FL Digi CW Setup Plus. This is the plus part. I have added N3 FJP amateur contact log here and you can use any of the N3 FJP logging programs contest logging programs and we're going to start by here in the amateur contest log 
we're going to go to settings, come down to rig interface. We're going to ensure that we're all set up. I've got this currently set up on COM25 and we're done. You see I am polling. Next, I want to come up here to settings down to the API and you want to check this block right here, TCP API enabled server. Remember that you're on port 1100. For now, we'll just leave this up because we're coming back over here. We're going to hit configure, configure dialog. We're going to open up the logging tab. We're going to select N3 FJP log, but notice there's also Mac logger, EQSL. You can log directly to logbook of the world. Then there's cloud log and QSO logging. We're going to pick N3 FJP. And you'll notice that I'm on port 1100. This 127.0.0.1 is your local host. It's uh, generic. It's always used. And it's basically your local computer. Now 1100, we're going to connect. And here in a second, our connection will be confirmed with this uh, little carrot here being filled in in green. We're going to close that. I'm going to click done over here. And now let's, uh, let me come up with something here. I'm going to put my wife's call sign back up here. K3TAM. And you can see I've got K3TAM here and it's all good. And say we go all the way through this and we got all of our reports. So let's say she gave me a 589. <laughs> I can never be perfect. And I give her a 599 because she's always perfect. I want to make sure that's CW. And I've, I've come up with another log. I added another macro here called log it. And you see that that just is the log command. I'm going to close that. I'm going to go log it. And you can see that she has now been added to my log. And that wraps it all up. Please remember to like, share, comment, and please consider subscribing to this channel. As always, I'm at your service. This has been a Hamshack chat about CW, FL Digi, and oh, by the way, N3FJP. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. Finally. <laughs>